Well, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's give God some praise because he's worthy to be praised. Yeah. Beginning of a new week. And when you start your week with God, all things are possible. When we include God in our daily routine, then God has the final say. And he will bring things to flourishing because he just works in everything for his glory, but our own personal good. Today, we would like to share on why seven times? Why seven times? Why do I have to do something seven times? There's a sip of my hot tea. Why must I do something repeatedly? Why can I not just do it once? And I want to take you to 2 Kings 5. 2 Kings 5. Now, there was a, a man who had a leprosy, Naaman. And Naaman was a commander of the army of King Syria. And he was an honorable man in the eyes of his master. He was also a mighty man of valor. Not just Gideon. This guy, Naaman, was a mighty man of valor. But, unfortunately, he was a leper. He had leprosy. Then, uh, and the Syrians had gone out on raids and so on. And then uh, his wife said, let me just see here. Let me just read this here. And the Syrians had gone out on raids and had brought back captive a young girl from the land of Israel. She waited on Naaman's wife. Then she said to her mistress, now watch this, God put somebody in your household. God connects you with somebody that has come into your life. God has brought, permitted this servant girl to be placed in a household of Naaman whilst Naaman had leprosy. You see, divine connections is very important. Never mistake that or take it as an error or a fault when you meet people they might not look like you. They may not necessarily think like you. But there's a reason they are in your life. There's a reason. Verse 3, 2 Kings 5, 3. Then she said to her mistress, If only my master were with the prophet who is in Samaria. For he would heal him of his leprosy. So they brought a, a servant girl into their home. Little did they realize that this servant girl knew the prophet of the living God. Wow. And uh, Naaman went in and told his master, saying, so he basically shared with his boss, his oversight, listen, uh, king, uh, you know, there's this person that I've heard about and he can heal me, etc. And then the king says, no problem. I want you to go and I will send a letter, etc. to the king of Israel. So he departed and took with him 10 talents of silver. He took money with him and uh, so on and a change of clothing and then they got to Elisha, the prophet. Oh, I want you to see what happened here and why we have to repeat certain things in life in order to get better results. So it was when Elisha, the man of God, heard that the king of Israel 
uh, torn his clothes uh, that he said uh, sent to the king say why have you torn your clothes please let this leper in other words let him come to me and, and he shall know that there is a prophet in Israel wow you see when the Syrian king sent a letter to the Israel to the king of Israel the king of Israel took it personally and says, what do you think? Is this guy messing with me? Uh, does he think I'm God, so to speak? You can always sometimes misunderstand and misread situations. And now, uh, Elijah, then Naaman went with the horses and the chariot, and he stood at the door of Elisha's house. Now, beloved, let's pause. You might be standing at the door of a mighty breakthrough right now. You might be standing at the door where God has allowed you to taste a breakthrough of expectation in the realm of your mind. You might right now be at a brink of a big breakthrough but it is possible if you do not apply certain principles that you can miss your break in life second kings 5 10 and elijah sent a messenger to him saying go and wash in the jordan seven times and your flesh shall be restored to you and you shall be clean Elijah sends a message. Elijah sends a message to this mighty man of valor, who's like a, a, a he's got an important position as a commander in the Syrian army and so forth. And he thought different. Here's the challenge that every individual faces. When God gives us a divine instruction, that is the time to say, God, not my will be done, but your will be done. It's not how I feel. It's not how I think. It's a matter of I'm going there to a place to listen to the sermon and then as you speak to me through the sermon, I will not take an offense because somebody didn't look at me in church. Somebody ignored me in church. You know, it's like somebody says, hey, these people are just looking. Some people are just looking at me. So I'm not going to, you know, why should I go back to that church? They're just looking at me. Well, do you want people not to look at you at all and not? have any contact with you then there will be another complaint oh well nobody pays attention to me you get such foolishness in the earth in some people's thinking not you your neighbor you know like somebody says you know they now uh regrouping in their love maybe and they going back to certain things in their love and now uh, they showing up and uh, some people look at them and just like, oh, wonderful, here you are. And they take an offense. They think that people are judging them. Can you believe it? How foolish can you get? You go to Walmart, people are going to look at you. Right? Now, having said that, go and wash, the prophet says, in the Jordan seven times, and your flesh shall be restored to you. Why seven times? I'm about to reveal that to you. He says, uh, and you shall be clean. He says, go and wash seven times in the Jordan. But Naaman became furious. Can you believe this guy became furious? He's in the presence of God's prophet. He's in the presence of God's instruction. And he became furious. And he went away and said, Indeed, I said to myself, He will surely, he thought in his heart, 
surely this prophet is going to come out. He is going to stand and call on the name of the Lord, his God, and wave his hand over the place where I have got leprosy. And uh, I'm just reading here as I'm talking to you, verse 12. Are not the Abana and the Fa what Parfa, the rivers, in other words, the rivers of Damascus, are they not cleaner water? You see, God is giving a divine instruction for divine results. And here's this person saying, I don't like this instruction. Surely there's a better way. Well, if there was a better way, you would have been healed. Naaman, you would have been healed. And he says, could I not wash in the, the Jordan in them and be clean? So he turned and he went away in a rage. Do you know how many people in this hour globally, they will get into the presence of God and that a pastor, minister, prophet, however, might be saying something and speaking direct into their life, perhaps through the message, and they get provoked and, oh, who does he think he is? I will just do my thing. Yeah. That's why there is such a mess at large. The church has to arise, awake, in order to take and take their rightful place of humility, of humility, and say, God, I'm going to that place to hear a word from you, and whatever you speak, I'm ready, your servant is ready to receive. Instead, <clears throat> some will get caught up, say, you know what, the music is too loud. Some will get caught up, yeah, the service was too long. Some may say, ah, you know, he didn't shake my hand. Some may say, well, that's not really what I came for. You see, we try to tell God sometimes how he should conduct his presence as an atmosphere in how it should minister to us. Instead of sitting there like Mary, when the, when the angel said to her, you know, you found favor and the power of the Most High will overshadow you, come upon you, and you will give birth to a son. You call him, uh, you know, Emmanuel, God with us, and so on and so forth. And and she was like, really? How's this going to be? I'm a virgin. How's this going to be? Let it be unto me as the Lord has determined. Oh, and we can just get to that place of surrender and not have preconceived selfish expectations in how a service should be conducted so that me as an individual will be satisfied according to my set of legalistic, premature, immature rules. <laughs> All right. Now, his reasoning he says, man, I'm not going to go dip in you know, the, the waters of, uh, uh, you know, in, in that river in uh, Damascus because the waters over there, could I not wash in them and be clean, uh, you know, in the Jordan instead of? Uh, hang on, he says, the waters of Damascus is better. So the prophet instructed him, go and wash in the Jordan. But he says, no, the waters of Damascus is better. The Jordan has a significant meaning. Jesus was baptized in a Jordan. When you step into your Jordan arena of life, you are stepping unto death, unto self, burial unto self, and new resurrection of a new future ahead of you. The Jordan is very significant in the Bible. Even the Israelites had to cross the Jordan. Okay, Naaman, he left upset and uh, his servants came near and spoke to him and said, my father, 
If the prophet had told you to do something great, would you not have done it? How much more? How much more? Hello? When he says to you, wash and be clean. So we went down. Finally, he came to his senses. But you see, watch what I'm going to read again in verse 13. His servants came near and spoke to him. Sometimes God will use those of lesser uh, importance of lesser position of accomplishment in their lives he will use uh, perhaps the ones that we think oh well they just you know kind of uh, written off and let me say this to you God can use a beggar next to a road to talk direction to your life God can use a little boy a little girl he can use somebody completely insignificant just to drop a seed and say, this is what you're supposed to be doing. That's why we've got to be awake to take. We've got to be alert to embrace the things of God. Now, his servants are convincing him. He's hiring servants. In other words, his staff says, listen, should you not, should you not pay attention? Should you not pay attention? So he went down and he dipped finally. He went down and he dipped seven times in a Jordan. And I'm going to begin to close slowly. In a Jordan, he began to dip himself according to the saying of the man of God. And his flesh was restored like the flesh of a little child. And he was clean. Why? Just watch now. Why seven times? Why seven times? Blessings, Renee. And my list is also watching. Blessings. Why seven times? When you go once, you may still be full of doubt. When you go the second time under that water, or the second time you visit that place where God is being preached, maybe your doubt becomes a little bit less. Maybe the third time as you go under that water like Naaman, your third time you do that thing again, there's a little spark of faith arising. Maybe the fourth time, there's like, maybe this can work. Maybe by the fifth time, faith kicks in. And the sixth time, you begin to visualize, this is possible. I'm feeling actually better the more I'm dipping myself once, twice, three times, four times, five times, six times. And the seventh time as you dip yourself into that presence of God's divine instruction, bam, you get healed, delivered, restored, fresh energy, a refreshing hits you. Yeah. And I want to close with this. 2 Kings 5, 14. So he went down and he dipped seven times in the Jordan according to the saying of the man of God. And his flesh, his flesh was restored like the flesh of a little child. Ooh, I love it. And he was clean and he returned to the man of God. He and all his aides and came and stood before, that's before the prophet. And he said, indeed, now I know that there is no God in all the earth except in Israel. Now, therefore, please take a gift from your servant. Hallelujah. I'm encouraging you to hang in there with God. I'm encouraging you. Keep repeating that same thing that you're supposed to be doing that is right. Because your breakthrough is on its way. Hallelujah. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. Go and make it happen today. Not happen. <laughs> Go and give the enemy a blue eye. <laughs> By applying the truth that you heard today. And love somebody and encourage somebody. Just be an instrument to be used by God. Until next time. Remember, Jesus is Lord. Thank you so much for tuning in. Bye now.